Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, playing as the eventual Enclave, but starting off as New Reno. So, we're going to leave historical AI focuses off, and of course, as per normal custom game rules on this channel, everything is set to default. So, a couple sub-mods that we're using, colored buttons, colored events, player led peace conferences, stage enter tool mod, Old World Blues, and something special called the Old World Blues New Reno Reforge sub-mod, but before we get to that, on screen, you should be able to see a poll currently for what I shall play in the first week-ish or so in August 2020. Uh, please come to my Discord server where we will let you in once we grant you a special little status level. And then you can vote with what you see on screen. Please vote because I do take in consideration all everyone's votes to see what will happen in the first week of, week of August. But regardless, let's start off with a focus in this submod tree. So, the littlest small town in the Wasteland. Before nuclear war, Reno was the smallest city in the world. Now it may be one of the largest cities in the Wasteland. But what happened to him, or it, immediately after the bombs fell? So, like any normal new Reno campaign, we have uh, a couple gangsters here that we need to deal with. Ooh, Crazy Eyes, the con artist. Ooh, less attack. Mm, I don't know about that. We have the Salvatores, Bishop, Mobsters, Mardinos, and the Rites. Four research slots. Very good. And... Once we set everything else up, we will discuss the focus tree, which is different than the base game focus tree, or di also different from the mod compilation to uh, focus tree as well. Which I, they might be one, there might not be one. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. We have a couple slots here. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna not use those. We want some dynamite. We won't need this yet. So we're gonna wait on that and do that, and then we can throw on the anti tank. Is there anything else here? Saws would be very nice. Just build a few infantry divisions for now, that'd be fine. Just your normal, standard things that we need to get to in the early game and do this. Cool. So, give us a couple days. So this is a unique focus tree, which we eventually want to go down with <clears throat> American PMC. So to make sure that we actually go down the right path, and by right path, I mean not Thrad's army in this one, we need Arch Dornan. And to do and get Arch Dornan, we need to probably get Sergeant Granite's Defense Company. And to do that, we need a certain Mason Salvatore. So, the biggest little city in the Wasteland. Before the Great War, fame of Nevada came thanks to the casinos of Vegas and Reno. It was mainly about them that American citizens knew. But before the nuclear apocalypse, the U.S. government became much more interested in the state. Firstly, concentration camps were organized in Carson for refugees from Japan and Asian countries. American government was afraid that among them, Chinese spies might also get to them. To control so many people in Reno and, and its environs, a large military garrison was commanded by James Hughes who established a permanent martial law and city. On the other hand, Nevada remained main supplier of gold in the U.S., which was vital for the production of electronics and American military industry to ensure the security of its source of gold. The government allowed gold mining op corporations to maintain private mercenary armies. Before bombing in Reno was owner of largest company in state, Mark Hayes. But city council headed by Veronica Evans opposed both of them, and only popular love prevented the fascist federal government from repressions. It seems like so far, that this person isn't a native English speaker, which is okay. I just have to compensate just a little bit, that's okay. When bombs fell, of course, America was not immediately destroyed. Yes, large cities were bombed, and the entire leadership of the country suddenly disappeared a few days before the nuclear war, but someone remained. People remained. So in the first few days after the end of the world, the U.S. broke up into a dozen new states trying to maintain order on its territory. Reno was managed by California Provisional Government. But it was still a disaster. It was necessary to somehow arrange millions of refugees after six months, of course, and supplies began to run, ran out. And it became completely clear that the government soon collapsed. Then Reno announced an official secession from the United States and established a new state. But what was it called? The Republic of Western Nevada, Nevada Military District, which gives you a bonus to produ producing more infantry equipment, or the Golden State. Now. I love manpower, but we're not going to do that one. I love the military district, but the Golden State? Hmm, some people might take umbrage with that, but you know what? Resource efficiency game, game for the rest of the campaign sounds really good. Did they actually produce gold in Nevada? I thought it was silver. More silver than gold, but I could be wrong. First of many, but really, who now remembers this antiquity? Most believe that families have always run our city, although this wasn't always the case. Although nothing was left of them, but still, who was first? Who was first? I don't know who was first. This tea I got here, this mango Maui black tea is pretty good stuff, even though it's really hot. Always get a nice cup of tea or coffee. So, first family. The young state did not last, however, 
about 15 years until the death of its founder from an unknown killer. This immediately plunged Western Nevada into a severe crisis, since over years of leadership has become absolute and there was no one who could really have imagined as an alternative in this position. Finally, the state was destroyed by the Japanese uprising in Carson, massacring all of non-Japanese in the ensuing war between the two cities, lost by Reno. For decades, the city has been plunged into usual for America's status of anarchy. Those who, did, who just did not take control of it were communities of anarchist survivors, criminals, and former military men. But in the end, it became clear that it could, could continue like that, and at least some order was needed. Approximately in the 2110s, potential forces began to emerge that could take control of the city. Firstly, it was the Washoe Indians, who had a casino that had succeeded before war, and which somehow survived, though, and where people from neighboring lands still flocked to hear stories about how to win things like clean water. Secondly, there is Madame Keller, who, before the war, was owner of a main brothel in the city. Ooh! Demand for services of which did not stop even after nuclear war, which I, of course, makes sense, which had has an approach to all leaders of urban gangs. And finally, the ambitious leader of one young gang, Fred Nelson, who seriously intended to establish his control over the city, simply having killed all his competitors. Ooh. How about now, though? Almost nothing is known about them, but who then managed to establish at least some of them in any city? Keller family. Ooh. More monthly population. I like the city brothels. Let me get some money from that, too. And stability. The Nelson family, which gives you less division training time and more war support. Or the Washoe family. I am a sucker for construction speed, I'll tell you what. Mm. Between brothels and construction speed or casinos, god. Man, I got some serious vices here. Ooh. We could get some, get some infrastructure, but this gives you stability and manpower. Oh, I like... You know what? This has more numbers. I'm going to go with the Keller family just because as much as I love 5% construction speed and infrastructure, we can always build infrastructure and get more caps. But monthly population, we're making babies legitimate or not. So, Road to War Nevada, 2227, became the year of blood for all of Nevada. These fools from the Republic of from the South decided to move north and drove 80s from Sacramento. What's the problem? Well, it's not it's not in vain that they were called 80s. They just went along the I-80. Inner cities located on the highway. Since how are we done with them? Ah, uh, we're gonna have a lot of babies. You, well, maybe not you and me, but you know. New Reno will. New Reno will. Let's put it like that. So to be honest, Californians are rare jerks who have fewer brains than wild ghouls, especially considering who they choose for the presidency. Hmm. Doesn't like California, but that's okay. But one thing really cannot be taken away from them. They show rare persistence in expanding their borders, which becomes our problem. They took Redding from us, and in 2227, they decided to capture Sacramento, populate Northern California with farmers, and give land to the barons. Only problem was that the city already had 80s. And in their opinion, NCR, if the problem does not bother the Republic, then we can simply pretend that it does not exist at all, but all of Nevada had to deal with the catastrophe in form of a gigantic nomadic army that rushed along I-80, demolishing every small town that they would come see on their way, uh, not having a good time with women and enslaving everyone else. Most beautiful part, though, we were the first major goal on their long journey east. This problem had to be solved somehow, and a variety of people put forward various proposals. Donna Martinez family, at the time representing the most illegitimate part of New Reno society, Proposed to act as a representative on behalf of the entire city and unite with the others in Nevada. Reno families, Vault City, Yakuza clans, and Nevada Rangers, together we could oppose nomads and defend the city at, at the same time, though. Don Salvato offered to buy from them to pay a fabulous amount so that they would bypass the city. In the end, though, raiders for this money would buy weapons from us to fight with other cities of Nevada and give that Salvato family as main producer of weapons. Money will return to them. Well, in the end, Don of Mordino's family said that the main force must be used, the city itself. 80s are nomads, and their cars and bikes are useless in the city, which will simply drown them among inhabitants of Reno. They will be cut and scattered, and no one cares about destruction. Question mark. Cool. Which plan do we use? Oh, we get more pop. A good opinion and stability, but we lose quite a bit of war support. The Don Martino, we lose manpower, we get quite a bit more war support, or Don Sabato. Lose caps, get an arms workshop, that's probably the best plan of action. Cool. King of the Hill. So, Reno's now a calm city here. Everyone bites into the throat of another for sake of a ghostly opportunity to be on top. At least temporarily. Dozens of families appeared and disappeared in the struggle for it. New ones, of course, appeared who wanted to compensate or compete for a place in the sun, and then also disappear. So, who won the last round? Which is going to be very important. Choose. If we have to choose Salvatore Reborn. This is pretty good. So, history of Northern California changed in the years 2241 and 2242, when a stranger walked through California surrounded by a small team, creating incredible in each city along the way. He repaired the Gecko Reactor, helped NCR expand north, restoring Goldmine and Redding, and in the end, completely destroyed the Enclave, like 
The Vault Sweller? Sweller? He can rightfully be considered one of the greatest who only lived in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Of course, on his way, he could not go past Reno. Then there were four recognized families in the city. The Mernito family was considered to be the most influential by right, which controlled not only Reno, but all surroundings with the help of rampant drug trade, a new drug called Jet, and created by indigenous, or indigenous, in ingenious chemist Mehrin. They were followed by bishops, Novu Rish, who came from Vault City but quickly rose to gambling business and secured support of the NCR and their desire to gain power in the city, joining it to the Republic, and for this they were ready for their dirty plans. Third was Salvatore Cunning, who acted in fraud and intrigue. They had their own allies, Sinister Enclave, thanks to the deals with which they rose so high, but only when this became known, many were afraid that the Brotherhood of Steel might itself come to the city and destroy these Salvatores. Well, end is last, and the only one that literally such right. Okay. Not resorting to either drug or slave trade, they earned money from the production of alcohol. Ah, the good stuff. Of course, Chosen One himself did not destroy any of the families, but he still helped one of them, which gave them the opportunity to rise later. Salvatore? Friends? Ooh, that gives you stability, construction, speed. Eh, stability. Salvatore it is. Sorry, Bishop. But it's Salvatore time, in which we can do nothing else yet. Cool. Salvatore born. One of the smaller families, we Salvatores bore our time and with great patience and cunning plotted our way into power. Our old allies in the Enclave traded high-powered energy weapons to us in exchange for chemicals, which we used to take control of our while our enemies fought each other. Daily elite support, daily political power, and we mobilized all of our forces. Good. Uh, you guys are already pretty good. Let's do this, let's do this, and get a few martial followers of the apocalypse. Ooh, we might actually be able to beat them up, but let's not do that. Well, we won't beat them up now. We'll beat them up later, maybe, in a different campaign. Milt in numbers looks pretty good, even though we cannot promote him to become a field marshal yet. We need a quite bit of more CP. Command power. Escort stuff, give him stuff. Nah, I'm not about that. They're not going to get crud for me, man. So what do we have for research advisors? Eccentric Derek. Huh. Carlton numbers. Well, with the way we're going, we'll probably go with Quentin Barks. Just because... We are probably going to use a lot of uh, armor, we'll put it like that. Runs with hatred. Cool. War Crying Todd. That's supposed to be like Todd Howitzer. Nice. That's a recruit thugs from Van Graaff, which we lose daily political power and stability, but we'll get faster guns or the old stash. We'll do the old stash first. So our allies in the Enclave luckily left us a large stash of energy weapons we have unearthed, allowing us to equip our mobsters with weapons far more advanced than our counter than our contemporaries. The exact biting edge we need to hold Reno. Let's let that go on so we can get this focus done as fast as possible. And we have the mobsters created. So that's 10 combat with... Actually, you guys are the same thing, 10 combat with as well. Okay, cool. Oh, that's everyone now. Cool. Motorized infantry force, tool procurement, nice. Let's grab that. All the good stuff. All, 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 all the good stuff. Okay, that's good. Cool, let's time go on. Woo! Let's see what is over here. Oh, yeah, it's good. Ah, uh, they're decreasing our war support, which really is not bueno. Whatever. We'll get some more war support, some stability out of having these folks called, uh, uh, Followers of the Apocalypse. I totally cannot think of it. Ooh, wow, Christopher Wright, that is special. That's not bad. Plus 25% more right now. Could be really good. We can't get Van Graaff, though. Old Crookshanks. That doesn't look too bad, but not great. Anything here? Two-timing dealer. From the Mordinos, little Jesus. That's not great, either. You know what? For now. 1.74. Almost 0.4 more political power. I think that's worth it. Even though Mr. Bishop... <clears throat> You won't be here forever. We'll put it like that. You won't be here forever. Cool. Very good. Placate them. Nah, that's not... I don't ever... I don't see any reason to ever do placate the followers. It makes no sense why you would ever do that. Or even choose divert the follower supply, since... You can get a bonus for medical technology for half the cost, and you won't lose stability. If you accept that. So... Recruit thugs from Vangraph. Two. To implement our plan, we need help from someone from outside who is not so messed up in the domestic policies of the city. And about whom... The rest would know too little. And we have such an ideal candidate, the Van Graffs from Reading. All that remains is to get them involved. We lose caps, we get support of our allies, Van Graff, and we get more guns. And who doesn't love guns, especially in the wasteland in America? Cool, let's go ahead and come over here. And beautiful. Notes and numbers, you are... Who we can afford right now? Gold personality, anything special? Not really. Uh, negotiator, smooth talker. That's always good to get. Go, so we got that guy going. We might get some more daily army XP. That might be the best to do for now. Uh, yeah, we might as well do that. Air XP. Conventional warfare is nice, but with the way we're going, we know what we have to do. Look at that Mason guy. Look at him. Smoking. God, he really is from Reno, isn't he? Man, I wish I was blonde. Well, I guess I just didn't dox myself there, but I'm not blonde at all. 
God, if I could have hair, hair like that, like Freddy from Scooby-Doo. Woo! Uh, my thoughts, if you're new to the channel, I, my thoughts are just all over the place, to be honest with you, but that's okay. Over the past few years, we've already received reports that a new tribe has appeared in north of our territories, but until that time, we've preferred not to pay attention to them. In the end, they are still only savages, although a variety of things have been said about their leader, but now they broke into the city, somehow having received a stock of excellent weapons and acting skillfully. They seize property of families, causing great financial losses and destroying our reputation. This is not just another clash between the families, which we are all used to for a long time. They act as if anyone can come to our city, violate all rules, and at the same time go unpunished. This is a manifestation of unacceptable weakness, after which any trash will also attack us. And all families agree on this. Destruction of these arrogant popped up uh, is a priority for us. Destruction of these arrogant individuals must be crushed, which I'm not going to touch that because something needs to be done with this. I'm not touching that. I'd rather not that not hurt me for now, so I'm not touching that. So, exterminate the tribe. Although these savages turned out to be somewhat useful for us, interfering with cards for our opponents and preparing ground for our plan, they also bring us losses. Arrange a night raid on their camp. Just cut them all out with the help of the Van Graaf. Which, we get rid of that. Debuff, that, that's a pretty major debuff, but we do get 5 stability in the end, so that's not terrible. And we have 8 days left with them, about a week, that's fine. Uh, go and help settlements, that's fine. Point five. Oh, oh! Why do you hurt me so much? Oh, combat language, nice. Uh, we can we can delay our land auction for a little bit first. That'll be all right. And we have exterminated them as soon as we lost uh, or got that debuff. Cool. Ash Friday. That's what we were preparing so hard for. Our task is to seize control of the city. Yes, our method is rude and suggests simply flooding the city in blood, destroying our opponents, first of all the rights and bishops. But to be honest, sometimes simplest options are also the most reliable. We get stability, worth support, more oligarchy, and a little bit less manpower. Uh, Ash Friday. Are we going to put those little ash cross marks on our forehead here? Uh, maybe we'll, we'll put them on our enemies. That'd probably be best. Yeah, we'll probably do that to our enemies. Then again, that takes a while. Putting crosses, ashen crosses, on people, on the dead enemies' foreheads? Eh. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. We got plenty of demo equipment. I love demo equipment. Ash Friday. Good. We lost manpower, but the last Mordino. City, one might say, is practically ours. Once Mordino was the main force in the city, but over the past decades they've been greatly weakened, and now they cannot resist our brute force. But they sent a representative to us who said that the Mordino would recognize our power in exchange for a <clears throat> pardon? Do you know who you're messing with? Ooh, let's do restore the Sierra Armor Depot, so for a free radar and arms workshop. God dang it, I already I bought him and now he's gone. I should have saw that one coming. Was it worth getting him? Mm, probably not. But I've learned my lesson. Don't ever trust Mr. Bishop, because you don't know when he's going to end up dead. Or disappearing. Cool. Reference manual. Nice. I love that th that stuff is so quick to do. Go ahead and grab you guys. Go there. There you go. Makes it easy on us. Ah, the last Mordino. City, of course, is drowning in blood. The mansion in which Wright family now lived is proudly flaunting holes from lasers and plasma weapons, and last representatives of this kind are now fleeing city, trying to hide their origin. However, for us, they are no longer important. Bishop resisted much more stubbornly. He organized a defense around his casino, but forces were obviously unequal. We slowly pushed him back until we drove him inside the building, and then we just crushed it down. Huge buildings simply took shape, burying underneath all who were inside. All that remains for us is to finish off those who were able to survive. Now our people have surrounded Des Desperado. Here are all of our forces, people of Salvatore, Van Graaf, thugs with laser rifles, even some of our friends with plasma weapons, <laughs> friends, are enough people to kill half the population of the city. Mordino has no chance to stand against us, and they understand this very well, probably for this reason. There is a single person who leaves the casino and says that his family is ready to recognize your dominance in exchange for saving their lives. They promise not to take any action against you and will help your people, but is it worth it to trust them? I think we should not be a monster. We'll see how well Desperado burns. We lose... Ooh, I don't wanna... This sounds like it could stab us in the back later on. Daily political power gain? Mm. Autocracy, huh? Elites, people... Mordino's ruler. I really want to kill him off, but I don't want that daily political power game to go down by 1.5. So, I'm really not about that life. Sorry. Oh, and that severely decreased them. Good. Calling it what allies, though. Some remnants of the old enclave still survive, and for all their help in our dominion over Reno, we should welcome them, these remnants, to our city and gain even more protection from their elite soldiers as a result. Get three air, a whole airbase, and some of the old army rejoins us. Cool. And you know what I love? I love them Golden Globes. Mmm. I love them big, juicy Golden Globes. Mmm. Makes a man weak when you see them Golden Globes. Depending on the Globes, I guess. Cool. 
very nice. Man, looking great. And oops. Uh, that is a little unusual. I normally don't see the Antelope's tribes actually being violent at all, but... You know, we don't have historical AI on, and I'm okay with that. We need to play some someday. Woodworking, cool. Very good, 2275 still. Uh, just go go ahead, that's fine. Do that, cool. Ah, grab that. Production efficiency cap, and then maybe we'll focus on getting some crowd control gear, maybe. We'll see what happens. Yakuma Nation's gone. Ah, back in my day, Yakuma Nation was further south than where they currently are at, or were at. Cool. Oh, we got some power armors too, huh? Oh, now we can do expansionism. New mercs. Or all roads lead to Reno. Is there anything else up top we can do? Not really, and that's okay. I do want to rush, though, getting the Enclave in power. So that's probably what we're going to do. We can ignore pretty much everything else. Chop shop, we get arms workshops. Extended contracts would be good for manpower. But this stuff can wait, I think. It looks like we can. Carson Lakes, that's kind of cool. Merc military. Reno has no standing fighting force, unless we consider the mobsters of the individual families. Instead, they must rely on mercenaries as their armies. The vast wealth of Reno means their mercs' contracts last very, very long, however. Good. Ah, uh, now this is what I like to see. Hull rip. More attack? Even more attack? Less supply consumption? Thumbs up, my friend. I have to do inspirational, though. That's too good to pass up. Uh, we can wait on that. Let's go I'm here. Good. Beautiful. And what is the combat with? 20! Okay, that's actually really incredibly good. With just this one division, we can do actually pretty darn well with them. Uh, oh, we just... Oh my god, yes. You're gonna make me weak. Man, I love soldiers in uniform, I guess you could say. Man, this is... Everyone's very violent now. Oh, do they go with the ghouls? Oh, the mole rats. Oh my goodness. Actually, do we have anything concerning Vault City here? We might, we might not. Uh, actually, we, yeah, I mean, there's Klamath here. City of Sins, Nevada Pact. State of Reno? Yeah, we're gonna probably go with City of Sins. Let's be real here. Cool. Uh, caps for this. Uh, Iron Doctrine wouldn't be bad. Research speed. Infantry equipment, mutant technician? Nah. Precautions. Anything here worth doing yet? No, no, no. Mercenary Company. So, in the vicinity of New Reno, there are many mercenary companies of very different sizes, each of which is looking for its own employer. Acting carefully enough, we can make good use of them to our own benefit. Yes. And we get some mercenaries. Good. We lose a couple caps, but, you know, whatever, that's fine. Doesn't really matter. Uh, actually, I like that this New Reno Reforged submod improves upon the companies that you can get. We can go Black Vultures. Looks okay. Former Infantry Platoon Heart Attack. Uh, get production that's better for infantry equipment, as well as eventual sons, and or that, for less division training time, and more infantry platoon soft attack. Interesting. We've got Psychos, Survivalists, and Vault, Vault Vikings down in the last line there as well. Go ahead and grab that too. So we have these guys. The Nanjimi clan, which looks pretty good for infantry soft attack. Better for motorized production, which I'm not going to use in this campaign. Or the Junk City Gladiators, which... Doesn't look bad at all. 15% is pretty good. Survivalists for this one. Heart attack, soft attack, which looks pretty good. Psychos. Division attrition goes down for everyone, and you get slightly more division recovery rate. Vault Vikings. Oh, that one's that's too good to pass up. Minus 20% damage to garrisons. But for this one. <clears throat> hmm. I think I'm gonna go with more soft attack or something. More infantry platoons. For this one, we'll probably go with production. Maybe. Eh, maybe not. We'll probably go with the Vengeful Sons, just so we get more soft attack there. Hard attack is okay. And then we'll probably choose this clan, because I'm going to be using infantry for a while. Probably not robots, but infantry for a while. Oh, let's get rid of this, too. That'll be good. Make sure, well, we can't really do much with this. Yeah, we really can't do much with that. It's okay. I didn't see anything that we could do against anyone else, so we might just go to war with Vault City early on. Since we have one unit of power armor already, we might as well. And it's 20 combat with power armor, so that's that's some pretty good stuff. Crowd control gear, grab that one next, cool. Eventually we'll make some of this above the saws, which would be very nice. Go and do that. Oh god, we're already out, that's not good. Anything here? Anything that we don't need? We pretty much need all of that, even though we're kind of out of advanced components now, but whatever. We have three in reserve? Good, we're gonna need that many in reserve. Are you guys still training? Are you guys? Ah, oh, you guys are like seasoned, right? Seasoned. I love seasoned soldiers. 
Uh, Vengeful Sons, Infantry Platoon, Black Vultures. I'd love to do that, but... We're going to do the Vengeful Sons. So the Vengeful Sons are vicious tribals driven from the land by brutal dictator Kaizal. While largely disorganized, their ferocity in battle in great numbers, not to mention their burning vengeance would make them a great asset. Now, after this one, I'm thinking I'm going to choose uh, going down this way, just so we can at least get that land doctrine bonus first, because that's that's pretty good. Defense on core territory is pretty good. Research speed is not bad. Infantry equipment production is not bad. Mine is 25%. That's a lot. That's a huge chunk. Huge chunk. Gotta love the team. But manpower wise, oh, it's not looking great. It's not looking great, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh, the Pale Folk. That was. Why is everyone so violent in Nevada already? Holy cow. Like, I feel left out. Of all nations, New Reno is feeling left out of conquering. Now, that, that's some big uh, territories. Hopefully, what the Yakuza do is uh, kind of screw themselves up. Oh, we're gonna go refine warfare too in this campaign. Yeah, that's... Uh, um, compliance gain is disabled. You might not want that. Is this going up still? Oh. It's... Mm. Now, what we could see here is that the Yakuza under... Cutie Pie Akari, they might be running out of manpower. They might not. Oh, the defenses are online. Great. We lose a little bit of manpower and guns, but that's okay. That's worth it. Go and grab the next one. It's fine. Whatever. Hopefully they've run out of manpower and they can't get any more compliance, but that's... It's an early game, they should have enough manpower to be okay. Or do okay there. Nice, six factories, not bad. Anything else we could do here? Medical... Um, we could get faster research speed, but we still have other things we could do here. Anything for this? Uh, Tech Officer Hilden. More breakthrough on power armor. Much love, that's all I can say about that. Just lots of love. Lots of love. Let's go with mercenary tacticians, though. We, as a city state, have, simply do not have an impressive officer system. We have to rely on hired captains to lead our troops, and it would be nice to general, generalize their experience to improve troop leadership. We lose a few caps here and there, but, you know, what's a few caps between friends? Wow. The Vengeful Sons, hello there. You're even better than the other group. You actually have recon. Wow. You guys are okay. I'm going to convert you guys to the normal infantry. Yeah. Actually, you know what? No. All you guys, you're going to become uh, infantry force. There you go. There you go. Motorized, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that either. Uh, wait, do we have Enclave Remnants, which we can't... Uh, we can... Uh, edit, uh. It's weird that we have two, but I'm kind of okay with that. Cause is gone. Mm, burning with Hatred. Runs with Hatred. Burning Avenger. Not bad, but we should probably do other stuff first. Military, uh, that's always so good to do. Oh, that's not bad. Minus 5% heavy trails. Ah, Freeman's fixers, fixers for now. I don't know. The other one, I usually don't choose that one. Cause just because... Well, we gotta do the globes. We might switch out later on. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's not like we have... We, we only have one that we can't use. Alright, we can go to war immediately. What would be a campaign episode if I don't go to war? Seriously. Be a little boring. Even though I've done, I have done episodes like that. Let's get these guys lined up, ready to go. Um, cool. Send all eight of you, except one, right there, and then send the other half so we can circle that uh, lobster dude, the mole rat, the brains bashers. Are you headed over there? Good. Warrior training, great. And that's a little bit ahead of time. We can wait on that. We're gonna definitely need that, even though we have that. Eh, yeah. We can wait. We're not advanced yet. That's fine. Yeah, we actually don't have to do any of this stuff yet. Planes would be nice, though. Planes are pretty, pretty, pretty nice luxuries to have. Even though we will probably get better planes later on. Go ahead and put them out of their misery. You guys are going to help out. That's fine. Come on, move, 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 move. I don't want to defeat them before they die. Cool. And this way, Vault City won't hurt us later on. 80s, cool. It's taking a while, I see. Can't pierce us. And we're beating up some moles. Um, good job, guys. That must have been so flippin' difficult. Let everyone get to the little location where they need to be. Just get over there, that's fine. There you go. Three. Two. Just go ahead. It doesn't matter. Mercenary Tacticians? Good. <clears throat> Junk City Gladiators, which looks amazing, but I'm gonna go with Nanjimi Clan. 
So Kieva Nanjimi clan is a renegade among the Yakuza, who dedicated their lives to the revenge of NCR after uh, for a raid on Carson City in 2250. They're extremely dangerous and capable fighters, real sword masters. However, they even need money though, and therefore they are forced to look for opportunities to earn from, of course, us. You get a bonus of vehicle technology. Plus 50% more soft stack is just amazing. I'm gonna recommend you guys go that way and then immediately come down here, here, maybe? Since no one is fighting this group yet. You're almost there, come on. Go, 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 go. Hold off, hold on, hold off on the attack. I need you guys to win here. We really need to win there, come on, guys. Don't win there, I wanna circle that division and destroy it. Ah, they have two divisions guarding the courtyard. Plant cultivation, that's fine. Whatever. Someone got a vault city that way. I go there. There you go. Carcass walker is good. And before we get too far, we've got some militia. Make sure we do it. Oh, any non core territory. Are we not occupying this? Oh, we don't have the courtyard yet. That's fine. Whatever. So far, we lost two guys versus 114, 115. Not bad, not bad. God dang it. No, we can't do anything else about that. That's fine. Just keep moving on. I mean, it's not like they can really do much against us. There we go. I'll take Vault City if you can. Let him do our power armor. Oh, that's fine. Let's move in, guys. We've lost seven guys. That's, that's quite a bit. Come on, cut off Gecko. Good. Hurt him if you can. Go that way, go that way. Come on. Come on, you've almost got it. 98, 99, and... Paul Vault City. And they're gone. Malve joined the Mohawk. Oh, that's cool. Nice, and I guess we can do this now. Oh, we already have militia there. Great. Don't want to forget this. Pacification, and that'll be a great thing. But that's pretty much going to end the first episode. We've done pretty well. We've already expanded. The Antelope tribes are looking pretty thick up north, and we might go to war with the Yakuza next time. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Please vote in the poll, and I will see you all tomorrow as we shall expand New Reno and expand the influence of a certain secret group. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.